In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and wash. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 27. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat of my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing have I asked of the Lord, and will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high up on a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing in the When I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, seek my face. My heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I see. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, cast me not off. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Office hymn 768. To God the Holy Spirit, let us pray. For the Lord's glory be in our way. Let me and us in my descending, and the hands of all we are
reading from 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat of Abel-Meholah, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And the one who escapes from the sword of Hazael shall Jehu put to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha put to death. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So Elijah departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen in front of him. He was with the twelfth. Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him and took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them, and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen, and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In our text, Elijah says that he has been very jealous for the Lord of hosts. The word jealous and zealous are very similar in English, and they really are the same word in the Bible. The one who is jealous is zealous for the thing it loves. And the one who is zealous will be a lonely person. That's what we see today with Elijah, but it's also what we see in the rest of the Bible. Phineas stood alone when uh, the evil, when the Canaanite woman came into the town, and he had to be the one who speared them through in the middle of the act. The Lord praises him. Likewise, our Lord Jesus says that zeal for his Father's house has consumed him, and our Lord is finally left all by himself as he dies on the cross. So also, the Father famously says, I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God something we struggle with, but might understand better if we realize this word, word zeal is the very word. And who is like our God? Now Elijah invokes his undeniable zeal to answer that question, where are you? What are you doing here, Elijah? But of course, Elijah is not showing the zeal as he showed it against the prophets of Baal anymore. He's hiding, he's fearful, he's not being very zealous. How is it then that the Lord is going to rekindle the zeal in his prophet? How is it that the Lord will rekindle the zeal in his people, too? Well, we should see from this affair that it's not going to be with a frightening power like the earthquake. It's not going to be with a great moving experience. It's not going to be by making Elijah a warrior. And it's not going to be by making lonely zeal 
unnecessary anymore so he can return to the calm. But of course, as you know, Christians, it is with a low whisper that the Lord inspires his people. It is with his small, seemingly insignificant, but truly fearsome and face-shielding word that he inspires us. And that word, to be sure, is Christ Jesus, the one who has now taken up flesh. The word is the power of God. We confess this all the time. It's almost a cliché. The word is also the means by which God wishes to deal with us by his external word, something that is not always confessed. But we should know also that this particular word, Jesus Christ our Lord, is rooted in and driving towards at all times this simplest of all words, the forgiveness of sins. And that is a word that is not loved by many. That is a word that is not powerful or important or seemingly very inspiring to most of the world. But the forgiveness of sins is the occasion of all of the zeal of the Lord, the God of hosts. He is zealous to see us forgiven, to see our sins done away with. It's the cause and occasion of zeal both in him, but also in us, his Christians, especially in those of us who must speak his word. It's the inspiration for all of life, and we, dear Christians, ought to remember that, ought to treasure that, and ought to become zealous to hear that the Lord wishes to forgive sins. For Elijah, it came like this, the Lord lives. Elijah is not then to be sunk yet. His work, which must continue, it will not be in vain. He has a whole list of things to do. Some of them he even able is able to start, as we hear at the end of this text. And it is only then, after the Lord has come and spoken his small but powerful word, it is only then that the lonely and the solitary are at last set in families. Now, it's often said to encourage people that you are not alone, that we're all in this together. Well, the Christian doesn't merely rejoice in that. There were plenty of people, of course, gathered around the bales. That's the problem. But it is this particular thing that unites us, dear Christians, the zeal of the Lord of hosts for us and his word that comes to us, his Holy Spirit that inspires this word, Christ himself who has spoken this word so that all may hear and be drawn to him and the Father in him. This word unites us. It gathers us together as a Christian church. It inspires us by this word. And the group that it makes, of course, is still a small and a lonely one. And yet the Lord does keep his remnant. He tells to Elijah that there are 7,000 that are drawn together, not around Baal, but around this low whisper, this small word, this word where the forgiveness of sins is found, the word of God in Christ Jesus. And this is our comfort, dear friends. It's not just that you aren't alone in your brokenness or that we're all in this together. The comfort is that Christ Jesus in his word is with us. He's coming as he always does to seek us out, to ask like he did to Adam, where are you? What are you doing here? That he may draw us out through repentance and at last into the restful, peaceful, and inspiring word that our sins are forgiven in Christ Jesus. That is what it is to be drawn into Christ himself. Then to be sent back into the zealous work to work for things that last forever and also to do it together with many fellow believers 
who are marked then by this quiet but persistent word that inspires us. I don't know if it will be a group of 20,000 or a group of 7,000 or this small group. But I know that the low whisper you have sung today is louder than I remember hearing recently. And that's because it's the word of Christ Jesus and his forgiveness. That inspires me. I hope that it inspires always you also in your tasks. Let us be zealous for the Lord of hosts, for in Christ Jesus, he's zealous for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Stand to confess the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits in the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you've prepared for those who love you good things that surpass all understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Holy One of Israel, you call the wicked to forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts that they would turn to you and be saved. Bless the proclamation and support of your word, especially by missionaries Carlos and Danielle, and Justin and Jordan, that they may witness to Christ who calls all nations to himself. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.